Hello everybody! Yeah, yeah, this is a modern video. This is a modern video. Uh, I decided to play a League of Modern because, you know, oh, let's, let's see how rusty uh, I am. Let's see if I can still play the format. And I'm immediately fa forewarned. I've just finished the League. Uh, I was playing for the 5-0 actually, I was 4-0 and, and lost to the uh, to Scape Shift. Uh, I lost both games to 6-mana uh, Uncountable Chandra, so... Yep. But, I was very, I'm really happy with the result. I'm really happy with it. So, let's see what the deck is, and what the match is. See you in a bit. Yeah! So this is the deck I used, okay? So, uh... Bear in mind, that's my literally first attempt to come back to modern after however long Pioneer has been legal, okay? So, the list is quite stock, it's got six Fetchlands in it, uh, two Sanctuaries, I, I played four before I stopped playing modern, so we'll see about that. Uh, three Hallowed Fountains, a, a quadruple Field of Rune, two Colonnades. A one oust as my fifth removal spell for opt three mana leak. I personally dislike logic knot. I disliked logic knot. One of Dovin's veto main fa main board. One of time reinforcement main board. So these two cards I think provide you very nice um, uh, sanctuary targets in different matchups. Game one, Tefri obviously excellent. One of detention sphere. Two now set. Uh, no. To be honest, I, I I would I would very much like to pre change it into uh, Omen of the Sea, but I know in modern the, the the passive is much better than Pioneer, so we'll see. Three Fawn, two Jace, three Cryptic, uh, two Verdict, two Hero of Dominaria. Uh, I personally I think the change I would like to immediately make is to play Facts or Fiction in the in one of the Tefris slot. Basically, because of because of the cost, mana cost. So we'll see. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll see uh, how that develops. My sideboard. So two purges, classic. Two rip, classic. Two mentor, classic. Two timely, classic. You'll see. I've got three timely across the seventy-five. I really don't want to lose to burn. I think with this version you cannot because on top of that you've got a dream trawler, not a lyra. I want to see how dream trawler um, performs in the creature matchups. Uh, people who know me know that I don't play uh, control decks in in uh, modern without double explosives. I played blue red breach, double blue red kiki, double explosive, blue eye control, double explosive, and again blue eye control, double explosives, uh, double surgical. I don't know how old of a tech this is, but surgical against combo deck, surgical with field of rune. I know they they've got field of the dead, so it's a bit more problematic. But, and to Ethergast against Titan decks, against Burn, against anything I'd like to, which is actually, I think, very nice, because now I don't see myself losing to Burn too much. I've got Double Gas, Double Purge, uh, Triple Timely, so uh, I hope that should be fine. And let's watch out some magic, shall we? Game 1. Yeah, game one. So this is the hand I, I looked at, so I thought that's an Im immediately a mulligan. One land is absolutely not enough on the draw. Now look at this hand side, and I think, you know, I, I have to keep that. Uh, because, you know, I've got lands and spells. I've got something for creature matchup, control matchups, any matchups. So, basic what I bottom here is either an asset or force of negation. And I think my preference is to bottom a force of negation because it requires even more resources. And if I happen to decide to fawn, I'm left with no resources realistically. Well, now set can recoup the the lost cat advantage, right? Okay, I, I see Horizon Canopy into so into Noble Hierarch. So probably humans. I, I immediately thought humans. Should I lead, have a path open? Mm, that that's another question. I probably I decide to have Colonnade go. My opponent plays Wanderer Selfless Spirit. I draw an R set. I hate this card. Just I hate this. Okay, I'll play probably like one or two leagues more with Nar set, but I will do my best to cut Nar set, not part of Veils. I hate this card. Okay, I play land uh, and I am pathing Selfless Spirit. Uh. I don't want to walk into some, any spell queller. Uh, 
So my opponent bashes, okay, but they don't have that much pressure, only three cards in hand. I can fetch out a, a Hallowed Fountain tapped, okay, untap, I draw a path. Now, I think what I'm doing here is slamming Nasset Parter of Veils, because if they don't counter it, I get a card off of it, at least, because this card is rubbish. Or, they quell it, which means this has been quelled, not a removal spell, right? So let's do exactly that. Let's play in our set. I'm leaving this for a potential um, Sanctuary because I could have running uh, lands off the top, right? Uh, so they decide to uh, Coco and they have find Koala Selfless. I think, yeah, probably dead. They draw, they play a Marina. Okay, a count counter magic spell, which is rubbish. Mm, so what I could do is path here. Pay the tax, hold up mana leak. Yep, that's probably the best play. So I'm doing exactly that. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have passed it so fast, but I took Tefri Time Raveler from now set. That was, I mean, if that was the best card, I'm dead, okay? Uh, they are attacking, so they split the difference between now set and me. I do another counter spell. God. Okay, play a Tefri. Now I'm bouncing a Selfless, I will have to pay for the tax, which I do, and that's actually very, very inconvenient. I hope to draw a land, I draw a land, tap to go. Now my opponent does, I can just play the play the normal speed, they play Selfless Spirit, trigger, I bounce it so they have it, attack for four. Yeah, okay, ooh, okay. I main phase now play Snap Path, because that's probably my best bet, however I could upkeep, uh, just upkeep, uh, tap draw, but I'm trying to contain the board, I, my, my read is that they don't have any Quella or, 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 or Coco, because they would have cast it, uh, unless, uh, yeah, they've got this, a second Coco now, which I'm very, very much not happy about, because they've had this very disruptive, very disruptive draw, double selfless, Quella. Now they've got second collect company. So they show me Droxkull Captain and Supreme Phantom. I'm looking at the board and think. <sighs> yeah. What I'm thinking is that I'm dead. So basically, we'll have to go to game two. Yeah, I got modern. And that was like basically literally my first game having come to modern. So my, my thought was. Yeah, I guess that's what I signed up for, I guess. Let's see game two. Game two. Now, sideboarding. So, you'll see that. The, 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 the change is that I sideboarded out a mana leak, triple falls, and a veto, which means one, two, three, four, five cards in total. And I brought in double engineered explosives. Makes sense. One trawler. Makes sense, and there is wild card missing. So if you if you if we come back to the deck, you'll quickly see ta -ta 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 -ta. this double card is actually ether gas. So that's not obvious, and again, I'm not sure if that's correct actually. But what I thought is, I'm on the play, so I can gas their hierarch. So if that happens, that's huge. That's one. Two. I know they don't keep non curve hands against blue white, so they will have a one drop, so which makes it that much. Which, and that thought makes me really want to have that gust. Three, collects his company, right? So it's not excellent against company, but it's serviceable against company. Um, however, I could, I could see myself just not playing the gust. Potentially just, just having a very, very small sideboarding sequence. Um, I personally, I, I've left to untimely in. Because I forgot about it. You know, I don't block, so that's like, uh, the same with Mentor. Mentoy has this upside that he kills, actually, right? So that's the upside, but uh, I think this cyborg is not very well suited against spirits. However, I like my double engineered explosive. But in general, I love my engineered explosive, so I'm, I will be playing it. Probably I could play some kind of mystical disputes there, but in this Coven of Souls format. Eh. Okay, so that's the hand I see. A turn two interaction, turn three interaction. So I obviously I have to snap it off. Tap land go because I want to have untapped lands every single turn. They don't have a one drop. Okay, I draw that. That's neat. 
So I do, I do just know Mystic. Uh, I uh, um, my classic Beta Island go. Now my opponent uh, fetches a Hallowed Fountain. Now they play an uncountable spell. Yes, modern. <laughs> yeah, my interaction doesn't work. But so what I'm hoping is that they play one spell, and they do. So I can just untap, play a Tefri, bounce it. Okay, so, and now I see, okay, I can definitely bounce it. If they play on another one spell, I can Jace bounce it. I won't be able to Verdict, but I could the next, so I can now Tefri bounce. If I don't draw a white source, I can play Field, Field the Cavern, hold up Mana Leak. So I could see some it kind of coming together. Okay, so play Tefri bounce, Drake Colonnade. I'm not happy with that. Mm, what do they do? They fetch, they play double spell, which I'm very much not happy about. And I draw a Gust, which is rubbish, so that was probably a uh, mid medium decision, but maybe, maybe not. So obviously I, I, I up my Tefri first, because uh, that's nothing will affect this play. Nothing I do this turn will affect this play, so I'd rather just do it in, in case I uh, forget. So, the plays here after this are, I could play Narset minus play Tapped Colonnade. I could play Field of Rune, untapped, Slam Jace, and for example, plus, right? Or Brainstorm or Minus. Or I could play uh, Field of Rune, as I said, that, which I had foreseen. Field of Rune, feel, uh, your Cavern, Hold Up Gust, Hold Up Leak, right? While fixing my mana. And I think Jace has really lots of value, so I really don't want to sacrifice him. Uh, just like no, oh bounce, right? Four mana bounce. Uh, so, so basically, I do this play. I remember to tap correctly so that I can, you know, hold up all the mana I need and pass. And I, I, I accept the fact that Tefri will just die, and that's fine. Okay, so they bash, or they pass. Okay, so that's the problem with spirits. Very often they can just they've got three power on the board with some kind of disruption here, and now. If I don't commit something, if I don't play into it using a Verdict or Jace or Path, they will just sit, sit tight with the Quell or Coco, and that's problematic. So when they have four mana, I realistically foresee two, one spell, either a Quell for three or a Coco for four. So what I would like to do, um, preferably, is double spell, right? So let's see what I draw. I draw an Ether Gust. Yeah. So now the only way I can double spell is to play Colnet Go, right? I could play Jace, right? But if they have something like Coco, um, Quella, something, it's not the best situation. However, I might want to bait them into doing that. So I can slam Jace, they play a Coco or play uh, Quella, and then the following turn I untap Supreme Verdict, right? So, there are a few options here. I obviously play Conlet because I have to. And I decide the same thing as I, as I said the turn before. I don't want to commit my Jays just like that. Okay? So, they play a fourth land. They play a Vial. I don't see them having a Coco because they would have cast it probably. Because they had uh, this as a backup. So they either don't have a Coco, or I think they are actually holding up Quella, because if you pay attention, you see they've always been um, holding three mana up. Again, I cannot affect the board, I untap, I play Flawless Strength, but now I can play Verdict into Interaction, so I can double spell, right? It's exactly the spot I wanted to be in. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh. Okay, then. Oh, really? Okay, so I, I must have been a kind of greedy here. I right? could have just verdicted. Probably what I had in mind is that if I verdict and they quell me and I counter queller, they can counter mana leak with wanderer and then I'm kind of empty handed, right? And actually I'm at 17. So I think the smarter past Skura decided that life total is a resource. And she will be like this now. Oh, look, look at me, look at me, kill me, right? A destruction, look at destruction. So I just do this, I look at that, and there are two options. I can take a Tefri and take 
tap out for a Tefri. Okay, and they have to quell it probably. I can just take it up. Or I can take ex engineered explosives, play it for one. They've got two ones and still hold up counter spell. And I think the mana efficiency uh, argument is the most compelling one because it will make you make me triple spell this turn. And I really, really need to be efficient. Okay, so I'm not quite king my fetch. Play engineered explosives. They play spell queller, so I think, okay, let's be aggressive. My counter magic will be probably dead very soon. Let's mana leak that. Now they can let, uh, make me have to pay. Okay. Uh, they take that. Pass. Now what they do is... Uh, they play Call Captain. And Selfish Spirit. Oh, God. Really? Okay, they bash in me. Opt. Two, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, um, seven, eight, nine, thirteen. Not dead, but I'm dead to any lord, but that's almost always the case. I could pass and just block with a colonnade. I could opt and try to hit something. I could aggressively verdict. I think what I'm thinking about here is that, like, basically the question is, how do I win? Not how do I how do I not lose? How do I win? And I think the way I win is chain verdicts. Okay, so if that's the case, how do I chain verdicts? If I play Jace now, I don't chain verdicts. And path doesn't help because of Jock's call. So I either have to find verdict verdict or uh, path path verdict or path verdict verdict. Alright? Obviously, the last one is ridiculous. Why would I path this, then verdict, that they suck, and then verdict? So, basically, it's path, path, verdict. Yeah, three. Or verdict, verdict. Okay? So, one draw needs only two cards, while the other needs three. That's one thing. The second thing, I've got half of the second option, right? I've got half of the verdict, verdict. So, that's... So, okay. This is, this is my game plan now. I'm playing to this out. This is my out. Uh, so I, I, I'm not beginning with the verdict. I wanted to, but then I thought, what does Skura say? Very often. Oh, I know what he says. He says, do the spells which give you the decision first, and then cast the spell which does not give you the decision, right? And I'm going to opt either way, right? In this matchup, I want to play as much on my turn because of Spell Queller, Right? Because normal, some people will say, okay, I'll pass with the opt up to see what I want to find with opt. Yeah, find with opt. As, as, as if opt was no, such a great card for finding cards. Not like Omen of the Sea, which I'll probably try to jam into this list. So, uh, I will play both this turn either way. So, I want to play my decision spell first. Sanctuary. Brilliant. Draw Sanctuary, play Sanctuary. No. Draw Sanctuary, verdict them and then put Verdict on top with that Sanctuary. Let's do this, shall we? Verdict, they sacrifice. Obviously, there is an out that they forget, but we're not playing around our opponent making an a on-board mistake. Sanctuary, put Verdict on top, hold up Gust. Which is, you know, not the best. Uh, they draw, they play a land, I'm not dead, sure. And even if they have a Coco, I can I can uh, gust it, right? You can say, okay, what if they have a Quella? What if they have Quella? I'm dead, right? So like, I'm not absolutely not considering that as an option because if they have a Quella, I'm just dead. So playing around a spell, like playing around something that you cannot play around because I cannot possibly play around spell quality in this uh, situation doesn't make sense, okay? I'm playing around the things I can't play around, which is everything but spell quality. They could flash in self spirit, but again, if they do, they do, right? That's my winning line, and I've, de I've determined it. We've talked about it. This is my winning line. If it works, I'm, I might win the game. Now, spell quality... Uh, now, uh, Exile Zone, I can replay the um, Engineer's Explosives, and I, I, it says pay zero, I thought, no, 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 I will pay blue and play uh, pay white, 
Now, MTGO doesn't let me do that, and I still haven't determined, I haven't checked actually, if, if I should be able to pay or I shouldn't, so I really don't know that. I really know, don't know if that's a bug or so or what. You can tell, let me know. Okay, they've got a remorseful cleric. <sighs> okay, so, so no, that was my winning line. Like, that was my, if I don't do it, I'm not going to win this game line. That's not over by any means. So I'm, I'm at five, they've got a threat. They bash me, yeah. Ah, they put something in. Ah, oh, drug skull captain, bash me for three. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, the problem, so, um, if I had, which I don't, but which I, if I had another sanctuary, I could put a, the verdict a, again on top and play of a Jace. Now, they could crack this in response, but that would be fine, because if they respond to me putting it on top, I can bounce then, then bounce this, and I'm not dead. But as it stands, as this cannot fetch a sanctuary, I have to find something. I have to find something. And because this fashion is otherwise dead, and there is no meaningful difference between one and two, I'm using it to thin my deck. Now, now, stop. No, 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 no. All of you, all of you, you and you and you, all of you who uh, fetch all the time to thin your deck, you're wrong, right? You don't, because fetching normally, right, in this type of deck, when you just go, yeah, fetch an island, it's statistically irrelevant. Right? If your fetch has any other use, Jace the Mind Sculptor Brainstorm, for example, or One Life is a resource because it is a resource, right? Think about it, right? Just fetching for the sake of fetching does not make sense. However, I am in this exact situation that this One Life is meaningless and I have to find something specifically this turn. And because and I'm look because of these specific circumstances, I want to have one fewer card uh, in my deck. But normally, under most circumstances, that type of effect is irrelevant. If I was at three life down to two, that would be very meaningful. You know? But again, I will need to find something specifically now. Brainstorm. Ha! That's good. So I can oust here and then timely reinforcements. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Oust here. Does it work? It works. Timely. Does it work? It works. I'm at... Go! <sighs> okay, let's see what they do. Because um, I hope my Jace survives. They attack Jace. Sure. Have you got a Lord? You don't. I end up with Jace. I draw the Field of Rune. And I've got the second gust below it. Okay, so now I'm fielding to get rid of that second gust. They're floating mana, sure. Um, I brainstorm. Four, five, six, seven. I've got seven mana, right? So I could put back opt snapcaster and hold up this, this. Right, or I can snap oust. Right, I don't know if they pop it or not, but I hope I would hope they they would, because then I wouldn't have to pay that one. And if I go snap opt, which is snap um oust, it takes three mana, and I have still four mana up for cryptic. Yeah, so it's either. Uh, command Gust or Command Snapcaster Mage, right? So what I decide to do <laughs> is do neither of these things. And I, I, I get the logic, because the logic I, I have is that Snapcaster is kind of empty-ish, which I don't think it... I, 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 it's not, but I thought it is. And Gust has been very, very medium in this game, right? And they, if they cast Coco, I can do this. 
and they can always have Quella from here. So there is never a... No, because I Okay, I could gas the Coco. They quell it. I can just bounce the Quell. Yeah, so I think that was suboptimal. I, I get my logic, but I think that was suboptimal. Mm, but I think that was, that was a meaningful decision there. I attack for three because they I don't block, they play a land. Now they don't attack, which is very smart because, remember, this blocks. This is actual, actual creature. They probably don't have any paths post-board. Depends. Um, it depends. You could play paths post-board against blue-eyed if you anticipate like Mentor or Lyra, right? Or you can just say, oh, they shouldn't have it or they won't have it. I'm not playing it. Now, end step, I'm going to opt to opt past a Snapcaster Mage, right? Having that the, the, fa the fact that he's deadish in mind, which again, I don't think is the case because I could have just taken a snap. I, could, I should have actually stacked it differently if that was my line. Because if I wanted to, if I knew I don't, I want an opt, I should have, I think, stacked it a uh, Gast snap, play opt, put Gast on the bottom, then draw the snap, and now my top is clear. Now I can go snap opt. My opponent can count or not. If they don't, I have five power on the board, which I can, which then I can bash for five down to eight. And then the following turn, I can bash for five for plus four, which is nine, right? So by doing that, I would have put them on a turn to clock, but I didn't. And I made this, so now instead of doing these, like there were plenty of very good lines, right? Cryptic Gust, Cryptic Snap, Cryptic Opt, which I played incorrectly. And now I'm, so this was what I'm doing. I'm bouncing the vial to see if the situation, that the board is clear. I draw an Opt again. I, I draw, I uh, Jace first because I, now I'm, my bottleneck is mana, not spells. Mmm. So I want to be able to probably gust a Coco and path a Quella. One, two, three. And I do have mana for all of that. So I probably bottom like Verdict Opt. Or Opt Opt. Sure. Uh, yeah, so this is my Trawler. I obviously bash. Now they have to have an answer. And they don't. <sighs> so that was a I think that was a very interesting game. It was very scary. It was, there was a, a lot of back and forth. I, I don't think it was easy to play. And I, I, if I, like, to be honest, I think I, in general, play. I play below my own expectations, and I think this game was a good example of that. So I would rate my play at like six out of ten or something. But yeah, that was game two. So let's see each other game three. <sighs> that was long. That was long. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now I see this hand, and I can see multiple Snapcaster Mages, a Mass Removal spell, Counter Adventure spell, uh, a complete uh, Haymaker in the matchup. So obviously, na 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 na. No, obviously that's not a keep. It cannot be a keep because two lands. That's one. Second thing, these Snapcasters are dead. I need a path for them to work, but obviously I need a path. I want a path, which means uh, basically this hand says you need to draw spells and lands. Because if that's impossible, that's unkeepable, right? I need to draw both interaction and lands. You cannot draw both at the same time. This is sneepiest, keepiest mulligan. Not sneepiest, keepiest. S fastest mulligan uh, ever. Now I have to keep this hand. What do you bottom? So that, I think there are a few options here. So, and that's why actually I do, I do, I didn't really like like these eight country decks sometimes which I, which I played like blue red controls because you get these hands and it's like yeah sure and like several visions at least actually digs and opt is like I digs yeah okay so you can bottom so two options or three options three options you can bottom a land and use opts to find a land right okay but then you might as well not try to find the land because you have it, bottom and opt, and just have opt to find action. A third option is to have bottom Jace, which is not excellent in this matchup because they have evasion, so it's very and they have a lot of disruption. He'll probably be dead. So I could just keep triple opt, uh, triple land hand, right? Hope that my poker hand is better than my opponent's. 
and basically go turn one opt, try to find something, turn to double opt, and be set up very well for the following turns, right? So my decision is exactly that. Yeah, the logic behind, because, you know, it's very rare that I will be able to realistically slam, slam Jace, and you actually probably remember the situation from a few games ago, by which I mean literally last two games, where slamming him is very suboptimal, right? Unless I keep the whole the whole game controlled, and I can just bounce their only threat, which won't happen, because if I'm if my draw lines up in such a way that they don't, they just have one thread turn four and they're tapped out, I'm probably in a good situation here anyway, right? So yeah, let's let's play the game. Let's play. So they go flooded strand go. Okay, so they play absolutely contrary to what I've said about the that they have to have a curve draw. Uh, but I've heard from really good. Spirits player, that, that's what they should be doing at least. Uh, play Hallowed Fountain Go. No, play Hallowed Fountain Go. I know, I would like it to be tapped, but I cannot let it be tapped. Uh, because um, I have to opt, because otherwise I'm not doing anything. And now my opponent cracked a fetchland, I responded by opting and drew the verdict of the top. I responded because I know I want to opt anyway. Right, so might as well not give them a chance to counter. Marina, Shaw, I draw Field of Rune. Uh, remember about Field of Rune and Marina? You have to pay. So basically, I'm going to find an island and I'm going to double up the main phase. Tefri, nope. Snapcaster, oh God. Opt. Tefri, yep, I want Tefri because he's a uh, turn three interaction, yeah. So. Go. Akira. So, you could go Taplan, Tapped Colonnade, go, and then hope they do nothing, Untapped Verdict. Or you can go Planes, go, or Planes of Field of Rune, and go Snap Opt, Block Marina, and I think that's also very much viable. Or you can go Tefri Plus, right? And this way, if you Tefri plus, he's got he's at five, right? And if he's at five, five, it means that they have have to add something to the board if they want to kill him. If they don't, I ant up plus again have verdict, right? So I really like this line because they cannot kill it right off the bat. Now, oh tap out, please! Oh yeah. And so, they've tapped out, that's a good one, I'm, so actually, oh I like that, so I have deliberately not played the planes, I remember that, I remember thinking about this, and actually that's, I, that's actually what I do, do you remember my pioneer videos when I say to hand back castles, so that they don't know I have it, the same with Field of Rune, and here I do the same thing, so I don't play the second plane so that they might not think I've got the verdict, and I always do it if there is absolutely no cost in sandbagging the planes. If there is any cost, I play it, right? But here, there was no cost. Okay, let's see what they do. They've missed, actually, they've missed the fourth land drop. So, does my does my, uh, they pass. Uh, pay two, why pay two? Oh, I, I must have tapped my... Oh, okay, I drew my land, okay, another land, obviously. So my play is to Field of Rune the Haunt. Uh, oh, God. Droxkull, Quella. Yep. And I cannot put Engineered Explosives on three. That's perfectly fine, again, that, because that's not the strength of Explosives. Its strength is turn one, turn two. So now I can go Snap Op. And to be honest, that's probably one of my only things I can should realistically do here. I could field of rune the log, a logged grove, or I could play tapped colonnade to, to be able to block with it the following turn. So I think there are a lot of viable plays. So obviously I opt for a different one. Um, and there's actually a lot of merit to this play. So now, I don't know... Uh, 
if you've seen that, but the reason why there's a lot of merit to this play is that I play this now for two, right? Play a tapland, pass, then untap, play a land, six mana, snap verdict, yeah, the board is clear, and I'm insulated against further two mana creatures, right? So that's what I decided to do. They fawn my explosives, which I'm fine with, because there was a safety net either way. That was not that wasn't my primary plan. They pitched Supreme Phantom, sure. Now they play a phantom. I like that. Sure. Again, I cannot play around and so now. Because they could have like unified will or something, right? That's probably the only thing I'm scared of. So what I decide to do is not play land first because if they have unified will, they can cast it in or anyway. And uh, I'm casting Snapcaster first, so they they could could potentially think I might opt opt from the Snapcaster, right? Because again, there's no cost to it. That's kind of like this bluff thing, right? I do this from time to time, so. I'll play Snapcaster, leaving three mana up. They might think that's not a verdict. Target verdict, play land, verdict you. If they know there is a verdict, but they don't have any interaction, that doesn't change anything. So basically, the, the point is that it will probably not change anything, but it might. And I'm playing to this might aspect, right? Because I don't lose anything by doing this. So, target supreme verdict. Um, yeah, this resolves, uh, play a land, play a Supreme Verdict, see what happens, yeah, go, now I've got nothing, they've drawn a land, okay, they've drawn from a log, draw step, they've got three lands, they play a Captain Go, I draw timely, mm, so I can... I could feel the Hallowed Fountain, but I don't want to do that because I haven't seen any forests. Like, I know they play one forest and they haven't played it this game, so they would have access to, to green. I could timely play Strand and then potentially put it on top again. And actually, that's kind of a fast clock. Or I could ho leave Colonnade to block, right? So the play I opt for is go. And make them have to do something, okay. That's a forced play, because you can say, oh, they could have a path, path to exile. Yup, they could. They could. Again, you cannot play around everything. Sure, that's a path, no problem, resolves. Take two. A vial, so they've got nothing. Okay, now, there's a very real decision, because I like to aggressively sanct uh, fetch Sanctuary to put Opt on top to basically fix my following draw, right? Um, because then I choose from the top two, not top one, random cards. And I'm my hand really isn't coming together that well now. However, if I think I might timely anyway, it's possible that I could allow myself for one natural draw because I've got something to do, right? However, I've got enough mana to cast a, a, Tefri, a Tefri Hero of Dominaria or a Jace if I find it, right? So that's close, actually. I decide I don't want to do uh, to fix my draw and I immediately draw Ethergust. Which, again, probably the it is the last time I thought about siding it in. Field of Rune. Uh, again, so that they don't have this uncountable aspect. Um, they're attacking, I cannot block. Now, because my hand now is absolute utter rubbish right now, I decide to take a natural draw. So, no, I wouldn't have done it. No, 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 I would have fetched for an, for an opt, because my hand was utter rubbish. I was lucky enough to draw a snap custom mage, which is, a, which is, a, which is an actual card here. But... Okay, pass the turn, see what they do, they they cast a Hierarch, snap opt in response, I will probably gust it, but again, I will snap opt anyway, so let's see what, what, what information I get. 
which could potentially change my mind. There's probably not not such not, there isn't such a thing. Island, I don't want an island path. That's excellent. So I can now gast this. They will probably put it on the bottom. Now they attack me. I can path Drogskull Captain. And now I can no no. no I don't think I want to f um again that's tricky again and that's why I like not cracking fetch lands and that's why I like the inclusion of sanctuary in the deck so now I can try to fix my draw however I am ahead but they are on a three turn clock right so I could maybe take one draw um because if I take a natural draw and something changes on the board then I will know if I want to for example go uh, uh, sanctuary path and not sanctuary opt right so again it's kind of close uh, uh, probably my reasoning is that I've got zero cards in hand so I want to kind of maximize my next card I, the, the next card I draw uh, I draw an opt uh, which I put on top opt tefri absolutely yes so slam tefri see what happens and they concede they concede so to be fair, um, there were two or two decisions here to bounce the vial or bounce the snapcaster mage, which I didn't have to do. But I would probably bounce the vial and see if they bounce anything, put anything in. If they don't, just bash them for five, right? And I'll be kind of in the driver's seat. But it's also worth considering to just bounce snapcaster mage here. Uh, anyway, that was a game. That was a match. That was a set. Um, so that was my first match of Modern, uh, in really long time on MTGO with Blue Eye Control. From that point, I rattled off three wins up to a 4-0, ended 4-1. I'll probably be experimenting with the deck. I know a lot of people actually like, really like Blue Eye in Modern, and I, I know I haven't been delivering for, for you. So it, it's for you, okay? It's not for the Pioneer fans, unless you want to watch it as well. It's for all of you Modern fans who've been waiting until I finally come back to this format. So yes, I have come back and I hope I'll be, you know, pumping out some modern analysis as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Cheers.